With the recent release of AI interaction guidelines from companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft, there's clearly interest in understanding the best practices in human AI interaction. However, since industry standards are not determined by just a single company, but rather the synthesis of knowledge from the whole community, we've gone on and surveyed all of the design guidelines from each of these major companies and developed a single unified structure of guidelines, giving developers a centralized reference. The first set of guidelines is Microsoft's Guidelines for Human AI Interaction, which was published in May of 2019 at CHI. In that work, researchers from Microsoft surveyed over 168 potential guidelines coming from internal and external industry sources, public articles, and the academic literature. These guidelines were combined and reorganized into a set of 18 guidelines, all of which had a common style of the sentence with a single verb. These guidelines were then structured over when it's relevant to the user over the course of interactions with the product. And then finally, Microsoft validated these guidelines and made it changes based off of a user study of AI practitioners. At roughly the same time in 2019, Google released their comprehensive set of guidelines called the People and AI Guidebook. The guidebook, they say, is based on insights both internal to Google as well as from academic literature. And it doesn't have the same kind of user study validation that Microsoft's paper had, but it does contain many references to the academic literature. And then they structured it slightly differently where the guidelines are put together in the order where it would be relevant for a developer building a tool as opposed to a user interacting with a tool. Then finally in June of 2019 at WWDC, Apple announced its human interface guidelines for machine learning. These guidelines differed from the more bottom-up approach of academic literature collation and user study refinement that the other guidelines used, and instead it's a source of more practitioner knowledge, not having really any references or data to back up their guidelines, but rather being based upon standing design principles within the Apple organization. And this is useful in that it provides a different perspective from the other two, a more academic style of work. So to take on the challenge of building a unified guideline structure, we used an affinity diagram process similar to that done by Microsoft, where we separated all of the guidelines from all of these sources, excluding ones that weren't really meaningful outside of the context of their categorization, and resulted in 194 individual guideline statements. We then conducted a card sorting exercise to find similar groups of guidelines and sort them into this affinity diagram. This resulted in 12 distinct categories of guidelines, which we then repeated amongst those categories to find four really high-level categories. So then, as you can see, our structure breaks down into these four main categories of initial considerations, the model, deployment, and the interface. And then each of these high-level categories is broken down into those constituent low-level categories where for initial considerations, there are guidelines on ensuring privacy, fairness, and evaluating the value that AI brings to a given user need, where for the model, guidelines concerning how you handle training data and then the training process itself. For deployment, you have guidelines for collecting feedback and handling errors. And for the interface, there are guidelines for ensuring explainability, mental models of the users, as well as giving them multiple options and a good calibration experience. After developing this unified structure, we can then look back on each individual company's set of guidelines and compare them within this new context. We can use this to see the difference in emphasis between the different companies, and we did this by calculating the percentage of each company's total guidelines falling within each of our high and low level categories. This is to control for the large difference in number of guidelines between the companies and to see relative emphasis placed in different areas. We found that the largest differences is that Google gave much more emphasis to model considerations for training data and processes, while Apple and Microsoft spent very little or, or no emphasis specifically on the model. Uh, beyond that though, uh, interface and deployment categories dominated in roughly equal proportions at all three companies. And then looking at the low level categories, we found that Microsoft in particular focused on ensuring good mental models and feedback, while Apple in particular focused on areas for ensuring smooth user experiences, such as error prevention and providing multiple options and calibration. And these differences can help us understand the effects of the different methodologies used to generate these guidelines, where the more academic style of work will tend to emphasize areas of established study in HCI, such as building mental models, while engineering-driven efforts, such as Google's, may focus more on the model side, 
and the culture and values of an organization, such as Apple, which focuses on user experience, will affect the kinds of guidelines present when developed from that institutional experience. Now, only when surveyed together do these differences really become apparent, which really does show the need for doing this kind of comparative analysis. Moreover, control over these guidelines is currently being held by these very few large companies, which might have incentives to emphasize different aspects of AI than the rest of the community has. Therefore, these guidelines must be augmented by the community. Toward this end, the guidelines developed in this work can be found at aiopenguidelines.readthedocs.io, which is an open source project that puts forth a call to collect a community-driven set of human-centered AI guidelines. And so we'd like to thank you all for coming and watching this presentation, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. And if you have anything more, you can look at the paper or go onto this repository and help contribute. Thanks.